going. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's pray. Let's pray for uh, Father, we just thank you so much this morning for the class, for our study. Thank you, Jesus. Father, um, I just pray for Heidi as she's home, yes. and I know she doesn't want to be home. Uh, but because I just pray, Father, that, that you give her rest, over. that you, you give her peaceful rest, yes. that this is what you have determined for her today. And sometimes we just don't like what you have determined for us, and I just pray that she would uh, embrace it and thank you that she does have the freedom to do that. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I pray for the uh, people that have been hurt in Las Vegas, and I pray for all the people that are ministering to them, uh, especially the families that have lost loved ones. Father, I pray that your spirit would be there and that uh, they would feel the love of the Christian community around them. And uh, I just pray that this morning, as we discuss what we have studied, that you would give us clarity. These were not easy passages. They were, mm -hmm. a lot of them, confusing. And we feel so inadequate. But, Father, we all have the Holy Spirit within us, mm -hmm. and that is the author of this scripture and you will show us what you want us to see and you will thank you, you leave change. blank what you don't want us to see and i just pray that um we thank would be you. all right with that as well help us to glean from one another in your precious name we pray amen jenny i think we should be thankful for something whether you like the president or not he is calling on god yeah. and scripture and it's the first time in a long time. Yes, yes. very true. Yes, yeah. very, very you know, true. Whether you like him or not, it doesn't make it doesn't, any it difference. Just call it, it's just something I can do. You saw a video about him being shot in the leg, and the, it was when the president okay. was coming around. And he's like, I don't care if you like him or not. You show respect, so I'm going to stand, even with a sh sure. shot in the leg. Yes. I'm going to stand when the president comes to see me. Right. To yeah. honor my country yeah, and I my agree. president. Like, that was really that was awesome. That was awesome. I love him. That was great. Okay, uh, you've got your charts out, you've got your um, observation worksheets out, right? Okay, um, give me a little review of Babylon. What do you remember about Babylon from Revelation? Wickedness. Yeah. <clears throat> Wickedness, okay, yeah, and that was confirmed in our references. Immorality. That's a wealthy. Very wealthy. And he was organized. Drunk. Very organized, that drunk is very true. true. Blood. Saints uh, and drunk with the blood of the saints. Yeah. Good, good. Uh, what's the angel say about him? What is the what? What's the angel say? What is Babylon? Wicked city. Well, she's fallen. Yeah. Yeah. Fallen. Yeah. fallen. Say again. I didn't realize that Babylon was Babylon. Ah, isn't that? That was a big aha kind of mm -hmm. moment. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, mother of the harlots, uh, prostitute. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, is Babylon associated with Rome, or the um, what she called that reinvented Rome or reestablished Rome? It's almost like a remnant, a continuation. It is kind of, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, the stone that right. touches the statue, right. with ten toes, and, those ten toes. And, and the idol worship thing was just. Oh, I've the Yeah. Dispersed. Yeah. Um, we'll get to the application. We'll get, get there. Um, Genesis. When we went to Genesis 10 and 11. <clears throat> there we go. Okay. What did you get about Babylon's beginning? As Louise has kind of referred to. The men spoke same language. It was built by Nimrod, yeah. who was and son of Cush, who was son of Noah. So he's yeah. Noah's grandson. 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 Uh, yeah. Not great grandson. His great grandson. I have son of Cush, son of Noah, which would make him grandson. I don't have anybody in between there. I have third generation. <laughs> but you got Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Sorry. So it would be a great. <laughs> I miss you. So Mr. Jacob, Jacob. then Chris, yeah. then. Yeah. So it's great grandson. Great grandson. Um, so how quickly did we start disobeying God oh. after the flood? Uh, yeah. Okay. Immediately. 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 Yeah, that was amazing. That, and and it's like all, already. But it supports man's sinful nature. It does. It, it just, does. You know. 
Right, and you always hear about, um, oh, you know, man is, is really good at heart. Got you. <laughs> oh, you did. Thank you. So now when I write that timeline, you can actually see it. That would be helpful. <laughs> Thank you. Um, also, where it was built. Yeah, in the land of Shinar, in the land of Shinar, Shinar. or Shinar. Okay. Um, and remember, babble means confusion because if you just tell somebody, oh, you're just babbling. You're just babbling on. You're saying things, but they just really don't mean anything. They're pointless. And um, isn't this a great answer for your worldview, your yes. biblical worldview? Where did languages come from? Where did the races come from? Mm -hmm. Why is why do we have Chinese mm -hmm. and African American mm -hmm. and Latino and Caucasian? Why do we have that? And Indian and because Indian. we're all made from Adam and Eve. How does that even happen? Mm -hmm. Oh God! God is God. God. He made God it. purpose. He made it all happen. Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Okay, they dispersed, mm -hmm. scattered, and here come all the different. Uh, languages and races, yes. I have here that Babylon is from the land of the Chaldeans. Well, Chaldeans and Babylon is the same thing. Same thing. Uh -huh. exactly. They are the same. And Shinar source. is actually the Hebrew word for Babylon. For Babylon. Yeah. 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 I was looking okay. all that up to it. It's like, who is Did you look up Sh Shinar, Shinar and know where, where, what well, I know I've heard that name before. What that was that? where Daniel was yeah. taken. Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. Abraham yes. was from Ur of the Chaldees. Ur. Right. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Again, lots of this is kind of starting to click, isn't mm -hmm. it? Okay. We've known this Thank land. You. It didn't start out evil. Okay. Neither did Adam and Eve. But they became evil. Okay. Um, Nimrod was a mighty man on earth. He was known as a what? A what? A strong, a strong, and he was a hunter, I think is what it said. Um, a mighty one on the earth. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord. Therefore it is said, Nimrod, a mighty hunter before the Lord. Okay, so that all sounds good, right? A mighty hunter before the Lord. Well, then we get into chapter 11, and now it's not so good. Yeah. What, what happened? Why did he call it been not so good? They want themselves to name. Oh, I'm going to make myself a name. Yeah, Who does that sound yeah. like? Yeah. So let's go back to the garden. Yeah. Right? Okay, I will set myself up. Mm. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> well, they decided to build a city to reach heaven. Mm. To reach heaven. heaven. Mm. That I, I don't even know how you would think you could do that. They haven't done that in 2017. But he saw himself as God, so... There you go. There's the pride factor. And he wasn't planning... They weren't planning on going anywhere. No. Which I thought was And why is that bad? Because this is the why. Because God... They, uh, they said, populate. so we don't... We're going to build this and right. stay here so we don't scatter. Right. And that's in verse... Uh, that's 11.4. Mm -hmm. But then God said in 11.9, yes... You, you are going to scatter. Yeah. Okay? You will. And you know um, that in Genesis 9 7, that's where he told them to scatter. Right. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So they're actually being disobedient, disobedient yeah. to what God told them right. to yeah. do. Right. Do you think they've heard stories and seen the results of the flood in their lifetime? Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. I would think so. Can uh -huh. you still see results of, of Hurricane Charlie? Yeah. yeah. Everywhere you. I do. I, I know when I head to the beach and they'll. All the trees are growing this way. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's Hurricane Charlie. That's what happened there. Well, these guys still think about how long it takes the earth to recover from being yeah, totally, totally yes. flooded. Yeah. They see that. Yeah. So they know God's power. Mm -hmm. But they still, we're going to do it. I'm going to make a name for myself. And we're going to be able to tell all the way to heaven. And what did God say about them? Yeah. I'm, I'm thinking it might have been possible because of what God said to them. <clears throat> Verse 6. They are one people. They all have the same language. And this is what they began to do. And now nothing which they purpose to do will be impossible for them. So that possibility that they might actually have been able to do it. 
So why does God, why did God want them to scatter? Maybe I should ask that. But he wanted to replenish the earth. That was their one job. Yeah. yeah, one job. Yes. You're supposed to go populate the earth. Right? He didn't make it for himself. He made it for us. You stay in one place, what, what's the rest of the world supposed to be doing? Mm -hmm. And again, they didn't have planes. They didn't have everything that we see now so that we can go, oh, that's beautiful. We don't have anything like that in that, our country. Look at that. Oh, my gosh. That's, that's beautiful. You know, look at the landscape. <coughs> look at the Amazon. Look at the... They didn't know that was out there, but he did. He wasn't telling them to do something bad. Mm -hmm. It was for their own good. Mm -hmm. Chapter 10, verse 12 talks about the great city. What does it say? It's saying, and um, rest in between Nineveh and Kala, that is the great city. And in 8, it say that they stopped building their city. And they stopped building their city, which that city would have been Babel. Yeah. Yeah, eleven. It's, it's part we didn't go into okay. on chapter ten. <clears throat> I'm in eleven. Okay. Um, the Lord stopped the building, confused the languages, and scattered the people. Because what God says to do, it will. It will mm -hmm. happen. He's going to accomplish it somehow. That's what we've learned, isn't it? Okay, and he specifically said, it. "What I have said will come That's to pass." So to trust in that, yeah. it is so comforting. comforting. It is so comforting. It is because he never lies, he and he never changes. Isn't that amazing that somebody never changes? That's the comfort part. That you don't have to, you know, figure out maybe today what do you want? Right, yeah. right, and you never go. Uh, wonder which Johnny's going to show up today. Yeah, is this going to be a good day with Johnny or? <laughs> <laughs> God's not like that. I didn't like that. You know, we we can be like that. Goes my handsome son. I'm just a little precious. <laughs> okay, Isaiah 13. Why does it start out with an uh, oracle? What is an oracle? Again, remember just to have your chart here so you can have your little notes. Well, I'm sorry, Marjorie. What did you say? It's a prophecy. It's a prophecy. Yeah. And it's Isaiah, concerning and it's concerning Babylon, okay? And Isaiah saw it. Yeah. It's not right. like he heard it, mm -hmm. he saw it. So now he's trying to write things just like John did, uh, of things that are about to happen, because they haven't happened yet, okay? Um, what's the setting with Isaiah? Where is he? That's why they gave you those... Uh, Rulers and prophets of Isaiah's time, of Zechariah's time, Jeremiah's time. He warned the kings of what God's going to do. He warned the kings of what's God, what God is going to do. <clears throat> Which king did he do that with? Did, he, did that, is that what that said? Isaiah was in the southern kingdom. Right. He prophesied during... Ahaz, Hezekiah was his big one. Hezekiah, Hezekiah, Hezekiah was his big friend. one. Yes, good point. Good point. Okay. Um, an oracle member is a burden. The, do you know one prophet that was happy? <laughs> yeah. You know, for me, I, I think Hosea was probably the saddest one ever because of what God called him to do. Yeah. Yeah. I can't ever compare my life with Hosea at all. No. <coughs> You know, go marry a prostitute, and she's going to continue to prostitute your whole married life. Because you need to be a picture of what Israel is to you. That's my life. Yep, that's what I need for you to do for your life. And he did it. He did it. But Ooh. he also prophesied about Jesus. Yes, he did. We had great prophecies about Jesus in Hosea. Good. Um, he prophesied before Babylon came against Judah and Jerusalem. You're like... And he's going to have to sit there and watch it happen. And there's, gonna, there's nothing to do about it. This is going to happen. So be warned. And there's no but. And he's going to be taken with them. And he's going to be taken with them. He knows that's his fate as well. <laughs> that 
And he never says he's discouraged, though. He never says, oh, woe is me. He never, he never says that. But he knows that's going to happen. Uh, I, again, I'm glad I thought it was probably be a problem. Okay, what did you find similarities to Revelation? Did anything oh, start wow. popping out at you? Like, hey, I read that. That is so cool. Okay, cross-reference, tell me what you found. Right? <clears throat> and again, I, I have questions too. So uh, in verse 3, I have commanded my consecrated ones. I have even called my mighty warriors, my proudly exulting ones, to execute my anger. Who is that? Who is he calling to execute his anger? Jews. Another I know. People from the the angels. Another nation. No. Hmm? Another nation that... Which is what he's he constantly does. He's yeah. constantly calling other nations to execute judgment on my people because they disobeyed me. Yeah. But he's calling them his but consecrated he, ones, his mighty warriors, his yeah. proudly exalted ones. That's weird. That's just like, <clears throat> how could you call the enemies of God that? Well, because that is their purpose. Yes. And again, what he has purpose, nobody can move back. Okay, uh, a sound of tumult on the mountains like that of many people, a sound of the uproar of kingdoms, of nations gathered together. The Lord is mustering the army for battle. They are coming from a far country, from the farthest horizons, the Lord and his instruments. He is arousing them yes. Yes. to get to come on to battle. From, right. from <clears throat> what locations? Diverse locations? Exactly. Just and Isaiah from sees Norton. this. They're coming, they're coming to get us, mm -hmm. and there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah. I, that would, again, I would be afraid. He never says he's afraid. Uh, verse 5, he says they're going to destroy the whole land. Mm -hmm. The whole land. Yeah. Destroy Is that in secular history also? Uh, from Babylon and what they did, they just desecrated. Remember, the Jerusalem land. was destroyed as well. The whole land. Six. Uh, well, it, again, it was left. When, when the land is left, and again, this is from my head. I didn't research that. When the land is left, it just, without it's tilling, just, it just goes to ruin. Right. Mm -hmm. And when they had to come back, I remember in uh, Nehemiah, they're building the wall back. Jeremiah, they're coming back. They're literally building with the sword as they're building because people are going to come against them because they don't want Jerusalem built up again. Uh, that's always just been a thorn in everybody's side. Israel, Israel. They hate Israel. Why hate Israel? Because they're God's people. That's why. Mm -hmm. uh, verse 6, wail for... Oh, okay. Did that... What, the, mm, what is that? That's Revelation. Right. And you're like, it will come as a destruction from the Almighty. Oh, so God's in control of this. This isn't the world. This is God. Oh. Okay. Hands fall limp. Every man's heart will melt. They'll be terrified. What does that remind you of? Those are your um, bowls and seals and trumpets. Uh, yes. I mean, and, and men trying to die. Oh, please yeah. follow me. No, let me run. But I can't die. They want to die, but they can't. Okay. That's, yeah. that's right there. They will ride like a woman in labor. What were they warned? Pray that it doesn't come to pregnant women while you're pregnant or it doesn't come in the winter or like that's what reminded me of it um, they will look at one another in astonishment their faces of fame okay and then make a land of desolation who will exterminate its sinners mm -hmm. that's offensive but it is what it is isn't it that's what he calls it okay uh, tell me what else you found Isaiah 13 10 after all right now, did that remind you of anything? 10 through 13 sounds like a description of what we see in trumpets and bowls. Yes. Stars, stars, moon, sun, right. sun, forth light. Right. That was number Um Earth and heaven shaken, right? Yeah. Uh, does it sound like abomination of desolation as well? Mm -hmm. uh, where did I get that? The wicked for the I also put an end to the arrogance of the proud and the abate the haughtiness of the ruthless. Mm -hmm. Um, I will make mortal man scarcer than pure gold. That's crazy. Mortal man. So what's, well. Well, third of the population. There you go. That's what it makes me think of too. Man's scarce. Well, what happens to, to 
two thirds of the or a third of the population, right? Yeah, gone, gone. right? Gone, and then seven thousand in Jerusalem, right? Die, and men just keep dying and dying and dying, and they're not uh, refurbished or replenished. The day of the Lord is coming near, okay? And just like Marianne just said, heavens shake, right? Uh, tremble, the earth is shaking from its place. That is that is the sevenfold. Yeah. Did you ever think Isaiah saw Revelation? Kind of. Now, put yourself in John's place. He's on the Isle of Patmos. Yeah. Do you think he knew the word of Isaiah? Yes. Yeah. Of course he did. Of course he did. Do you think this brought him a little comfort? Okay, what I'm seeing is really not that bizarre because Isaiah saw it. So I must be, must be okay because he's writing the same thing kind of like I'm saying. But that was way back with Isaiah. And now it's John. Maybe he had a aha moment. I think, right? Right? I just, I'm like... Does scripture not give you comfort? Or if someone else has been through something and you're going with them, you kind of compare stories, don't you? It's like, oh, that's normal? Yeah, I did that too. Uh, moms. Right? Moms. Moms, right? If I just couldn't open the door, I would vomit here and my hair was, uh, I did that yesterday. I'm not a failure. Right? This is live. This is live. And, and when you tell people, oh, how are you doing? I'm fine. And your answer is always fine. It's like, does nothing ever bad happen to you ever? Something must be wrong with me. Right? Okay? I think John found comfort in that. Okay. Isaiah said some of this stuff. And he lived. He was okay. He wrote it down. Nobody killed him for writing it down. I, he obeyed God. I'm obeying God. I think he found comfort in that. Do you not find comfort in the sufferings that Paul went through? Mm-hmm. My life's nothing. Yeah. There's hope. There's hope. Right. If Paul could do it, I can do it. I can do this life. I can do this Christian walk. I've never been beaten. I've not been shipwrecked three times. I've not been abandoned in the ocean for a day and a night. None of that's happened to me. I'm good. And he still rejoiced in the Lord. Was so excited that he can live the Christian life and suffer for Christ's sake. Wow. I, again, I think we learn from each other. Okay? Um, 17 to 19. Is this obscure or obvious that he's going to bring up the needs? No, that's pretty obvious. Uh, he yeah. says it, right? Yeah, it's right there. <laughs> so I really think he's talking about the me, the Persians here. No, that's what it says. Yeah. So there's no interpretation. You did it. Do you not go right back to the statue in Daniel? Oh, yeah. I can just, just see it. Oh, he's going to bring the Medes against them. So who has to come before them? So if we're going to get to the Medes, then that one's got to come first. I have that marked as a time change, which would then now be fulfilled. That's right. So that happened. Right. Um, back up here when he's going to shake it, that hasn't happened yet. Uh-uh. That's what makes prophecy so confusing. Yeah. First, they're going to happen. This already happened. This is going to happen, but that already <laughs> happened. And it's back and forth and back and forth. And yeah, that makes interpretation different. Exactly, yeah. It's the same person. It yeah. change the same person. Right, right, right. So, uh, um, who will not value silver or take pleasure in gold. Their bows will mow down the young men. They will not even have compassion on the fruit of the womb, nor will their eye pity children. Uh, I will never forget Chuck talking about the Assyrians and how wicked, wicked, wicked they were. They actually delighted in having a man see his wife ravaged, or if she was pregnant, killing her and cutting open, you know, if she's pregnant, opening up her womb. So that was the last thing he'd see, and then he'd pluck their eyes out. They, They got enjoyment out of that. That is sick. That is just sick. They're all human. Considered so sophisticated. Yes. I mean, um, uh, correct me, Assyrian Babylon, kind of interchangeable. Babylon, we're known for those hanging gardens, the beautiful, beautiful works of architecture that they had, and yet, disgust. Wow. 
I mean, like it's those, the allure. you walked into those museums and you saw yes. because they have so much there, and you walk in and you see the whole thing because they take everything. Yeah, right, but, right. And you walk in, but there are like all of these amazing things that last at such architecture. Right. And then all of the reliefs are so violent. <laughs> With the lions and the, the good lion point. hunting and things like that. It's gorgeous. Gorgeous. They're violent. They're violent. Yes. Yes. And if you um, and if you see painted ceilings in Europe uh -huh. and you look up, like, oh, that's so pretty and you travel down and go, oh uh -huh. that's awful. Yeah. Because they eventually go to hell. It's to see all of them go to hell hell and what's happening and the people are, Wah! right and their people are trying to reach down and it always starts out pretty but ends up okay even um, when we were in that London Museum they had uh, depictions of Satan and you kind of have to find the evil in the painting oh yeah there's there. always a juxtaposition of right everything's like it's just very interesting again man has not now, um, I would write 539 BC next to that verse because it happened. We don't, we're not looking, remember she says, watch and see, don't try and force scripture into history. As history happens, put it down. It will happen, scripture is true, but when you see it happen, kind of write your date. Oh look, that, that happened. It's happened, has this happened? I don't think so. The sun, the moon, that's not gotten dark. The earth hasn't been shaken. That hasn't happened yet. The Medes, he already did that. Okay? And we know that happened in 539 BC. Do we know that Babylon will be destroyed completely? The revelation of Babylon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We do. We do know that. Uh, has it happened yet? No, I don't even know where Babylon is yet. It, it, oh. Babylon hasn't come into power yet. <coughs> what about where Saddam was rebuilding Babylon? But again, has it become an economic world power yet? No, no, right. but... I shouldn't say know. I don't know where it is. I know it's in the Middle East. Okay. You don't know when okay. it is. I don't know when it is. Okay. There we go. Right. That's Thank the other dumb thing I should say. <laughs> and, and, and you know, when it... Do you think we're going to recognize it when it comes? He was, but the revelation Babylon that will be revived yeah. coming, do you think you're going to recognize it if you're here? I'm not going to be here. I'm not going to be here, says Louise. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know so. how quick I would think so. I would think so. Right. Uh, yes. Yeah. I have no yes. doubt I'm going to know. Yeah. That's that one. Mm -hmm. If I'm here. Yeah. yeah. If I'm here. I may not be here. Uh, that wouldn't bother me at all if I wasn't here. Some pastors <laughs> will and many won't. Hmm? Because some pastors will and many yeah, some won't. Many won't. That's won't. a scary yeah. thing. Right. Yeah. Why do you think they won't? And why do you think many believers and believers won't? Well, the scriptures say so. <laughs> Number one. Well, one, scripture says so. <laughs> God. Right. Why else? <clears throat> why else do you think they won't know? Well, because so many people haven't studied. That's the thing. Yeah. That's the word yeah. and that and don't know. Right. As we've discovered, right. Revelation actually makes the rest of the Bible make sense. And did you ever think that was going to happen? <laughs> I, I did. No, I, mean, I did it. I thought, yeah. I got to yeah. study this book and then we get to move on. We get yeah. to move on. It Never did I think thing to get. this makes Just so much sense with all whole these whole other thing. scriptures. Right. <laughs> so many parables I get now. I didn't, I didn't get them before. Yes. Mm -hmm. But with, with uh, Revelation, I'm like, oh, that's what that means. Mm -hmm. Right. So why are we so afraid to study Revelation? <laughs> Because we've listened to what other people yes. have said instead of reading God's word. There we go. That's a big one. I That's a big been one. Scared. Right? Have Did you know that there was a blessing in we here? We think that it's going to be just scary for us. Yeah, it's right. Not, it's not taken as no. This will calm. Like this will calm you down. Right. It's, bad, it's bad, bad, actually not bad. bad, bad. Yeah. You know, like I had Pardon? no idea how much it would enhance my worship. Oh, that's a great way to say it too. It enhances your worship. Um, yeah. Because it's good. when we see living. evil in the yeah. world yeah. Uh, at Vegas, yeah. Yeah. I was. You know why? We still yeah. don't even know why he gunned down fifty nine yeah. people. We we don't even know why. Well, because he could, so he so did. Why? I don't know. 
Say that again. The Bible warns us that in the last days they are going to mm. be. Yes. That was pure evil. That, that is yeah. pure yeah. evil. Pure. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Personified. We know there's evil in the world, but when we see it like that. On the world stage. On the world stage. Now, um, what do you think non-believers think about that? Why did God let that happen? Yeah. He's so mean. He's right. 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 Why does he allow evil to happen? He was a God of love. Yeah. He wouldn't do that. Okay. We've all heard it, haven't we? Yeah. Okay. How do you answer it? Because you have to answer it. It's a choice. He is it's, I mean, sin is in the world. Right. We live in the world. It is man in has the world. choice. Good. And everybody so can make their own choice. And everybody makes their own choice. Whether, okay. whether to love and follow God or, or not. That's it's, it. It's, they they Dr. take Jeffrey's God out of everything, so he's letting us have at it. And yeah, there you go. True, true. And was it God's fault that that happened? No. 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 They no. had enough water. Okay. Was it his purpose? But of course, yeah. he could have stopped it. He didn't yeah. stop it. Yeah. Right. But... That what people would say that organic, okay, but he's so powerful, he could have done it. Why? So what happens when something really good yeah. happens in the world? Yeah. Oh. Why don't they say why did God allow that? Yeah. Why just because God they're too busy it? taking credit for it. That's, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, what if people say uh, there is no hell? Oh well, well for everything there is an equal and opposite reaction. So that's there's a, a heaven, scientific there has to be a fact. Hell. We know that. So if you believe that there is a heaven, then there has to be a hell. There has to be a hell, right? So if you don't go, if you don't address that, then then you won't. That people think that they won't be accountable to right. it. Right. Right. Well, there are some there. Christians that yeah. think that hell is just the absence of God, and they don't think of it fiery burning like right. Right. described. That we know scripture. scripture says it is. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. We know scripture says it's a lake of. Fire. Well, and but eventually, it eventually yeah. true. So true. I think that they take bits and pieces, and right. they, you know what I mean? Like, I do. it's like, I mean, I think you can take a take a portion and go with that, and then you can. I mean, I think, and sometimes I think sometimes when they're talking, people make it I don't know, like Everyone they're not always yeah, yeah, and they're not right. clear. Right. You know, always communicating what they're like. Well, yeah, that does say that, but it also says this. Yeah. They decide what goes into their box of belief. That right. is so bad. <laughs> <laughs> but that is so also so so what dangerous. they've been told. Yeah, that's and, so and, dangerous. And that's, and you dangerous. know, if, they, if, they're, if they're at all worried about being able to understand the scripture, I mean, they're kind of stuck just listening and gathering what they listen in between, you know. And processing what they think they can understand. Oh, right. To and I think they fit where they are. I've heard time and time again them say, it's just too confusing right. to me. Right. 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 Exactly. Right. Um, Okay, I'm just going to throw out some questions here because you need to be able to answer these. In the Old Testament, it says a lot of believers went to Abraham's bosom. Where is that? Abraham's bosom was still in the good side of the there. Yeah. Correct. Hades. Okay. Are you God? So we have Abraham's bosom and Hades. Why? Why do we have Abraham? What's the purpose of that? Because Jesus wasn't. That's exactly right. Did you know that? The first. Did you know that? Didn't. Okay. Yeah. They, they are not cleansed with the blood of Jesus yet. Once he did that on the cross, and it said he descended into the, where? Right. Uh, well, why did he do that? To gather. To gather Abraham's bosom, covered in blood, there in heaven. Never in Scripture did it say, like Paul said, to be absent from the body to be present with the Lord. Because does Jesus not say had that come. in the Old Testament. Why doesn't it say that? Jesus. Because Jesus hadn't come yet. Okay? These are, um, I don't want to say doctrines of your faith, but these are questions you should have. But wait, in the Old Testament, this Holy Spirit came upon people, and the Spirit left him. And then, well, that's how you can right. lose your salvation. No, 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 no. You're taking that out of context. How are you taking that out of context? Well, because in the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit could not indwell. He could not come inside, right? Why? Because, because we were not there cleansed. Has to cleanse we were not yet. cleansed. The perfect Lamb of God had not come yet. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
when he came, now the Holy Spirit can indwell and enable us to live this Christian life. So does that give an answer of why we don't have to do sacrifices? Because I mean, it just yeah. was built. It was done. It was the cross once. Yes. Yes. It's that's sacrilegious. It is blasphemous to offer a lamb on the altar. Because Jesus, the perfect man, has already right. been sacrificed. Yes. We do not, Hebrews tells you that. We don't go back and sacrifice over and over and over again. Right. Jesus did it once for all. Yes. Perfect lamb of God to done. Make, to make, you know, them having to do rosary and things like right. that <clears throat> clear. That's why I don't understand That how. should be clear. Why yeah, isn't it? Clear. Well, they think the spirit can come and go too. Yes. Okay. And again, it is up to me. Okay. All those indulgences that we had to pay for to absolve my sin. That's not what absolves your sin. That's why Luther, when he read, the just shall live by faith. Not indulgences, not paying for this, not uh, so, say so many Hail Marys and go do this and this and then. And the priest didn't forgive me of my sin. Jesus forgave me of my sin. Mm -hmm. So we had to step back and go, oh, yeah. this, this, this isn't We're right. This, wrong. I yeah. I love this isn't movie. right. I, I do too. And he thought the people that were you know, doing this yeah. would be so welcome to know yeah. we're doing it wrong. They don't want to know that. Yeah, that took a lot of power out of yeah. Takes power and yeah. money. Right. Because yeah. money built these beautiful cathedrals mm -hmm. that we see, and where did they get the money from? The indulgences. Mm -hmm. Which see, made yeah. you get your sin absolved. No, it doesn't. I it's still have wrong, wrong, wrong. vivid memory of this lady. When I was in Mexico, and this lady crawling up the steps really? on her still. knees. On her yeah. knees. This was in 75. But still. But still. 1500s is when Luther came. And I thought, and I was walking up the steps, and it's like, oh. oh yeah, in, in seven, no, 1980, I guess it was. It broke my heart. I was in Rome yeah. on Palm Sunday when the Pope was there. The, the tour guide went, don't you want to get, go out there and get blessed by the Pope? No. No, no. I don't. I don't. I'm thinking, no. He has not blessed me. I already have the indwelling Holy Spirit. I Whatever he's got, I've got. So, yeah. And when you go really to like the gilded palace of and I hope he has. St. Peter's right? is so upset. Yeah. Yeah. You're yes. thinking all of these people are giving all that they have for everything to light a candle. Right, just to yeah. light a candle. <laughs> you know? that's yeah, my love one out of the glory. Right. And that's again a false teaching that we have to be able to answer. There is no purgatory. How do you know? Let me take you to Hebrews. I think a lot of people think they can live for self yes. because they will have time to repent later. Yes, <laughs> yes. I want to live and do all the stuff I want to do, and then I'll get saved. Right. That is a lie right from Satan. You yeah, don't yeah. know how long you have. You don't know. That's that confidence that is, it's just not there. But isn't that a picture of battle? Mm -hmm. yes. I'm not going to be a widow. I will not be mourning. Yeah, you will. <laughs> and then she was. But she really did think that she would never. Be she really mourning. did believe yeah. that. Yeah, absolutely. The, yeah. Yes, I, I agree. Okay, uh, Isaiah 14. Now, did y'all struggle reading this? Going, I don't understand this at all. I think I get this because I really don't. Some of it is good. Some of like I get it, and then some of it I read. I go, <laughs> okay, I'm like that. It's jumping from things to things. Right, <laughs> it's little. jumping from things to things, and I'm yeah. like, I'm supposed to see that one in here. Yeah. Okay, and that's when you chew, chew, chew. You meditate, you meditate. Okay, it's there. How it's do we know it's there? Because it's, she chose it tells it. us, and she tells us, <laughs> she you're, chose, this is, you're yeah. studying Babylon, and here's your references. She's not going to have us go into scripture uh, when it's really not there. Yeah. That, yeah. Okay, so I know it's there, so i got to look a little bit deeper. It's, it's There's so cool. the them and the That's the pronouns, yeah. right? we got to figure right. out who that stands for. Them exactly. and you. And has it happened, or is it still future? Okay. Isaiah did see Babylon going to come, take over Jerusalem. That all happened. But some of it, because there is a future Babylon. So there was a Babylon, the head of the statue, and 
there's a future battle in coming. So we have to be able to discern which one already happened and which one didn't. If it's obscure, leave it alone. Yeah. If it's obvious when it says, I'm going to bring the needs and the stuff, well, that's obvious that happened. We can put a timeline on that. That's great. If we can't, leave it alone. I loved how it reminds us that don't try to put anything in the scripture. Just right. read it how it just is. Just read it and let it speak yes. for itself. Good. Sometimes we just try to What does verses things. 1 through 3 sound like? I mean, it could Israel. sound like two things. Israel and Israel. Israel. <clears throat> okay. And then the strangers. Yes. Did that not remind you of Egypt when they came out of Egypt? Because the strangers and aliens came right. with them? Uh, but how do you know it's not? Okay. Good. They attached themselves to the house. There we go. Okay. Um, and it will be in the day when the Lord gives you rest from your pain. That hasn't happened yeah. yet. Yeah. So I know that wasn't the Exodus, but it sure sounded like it, but it wasn't. Because some things didn't I couldn't make them fit. Right. So when you can't make them fit, they don't fit. Don't make them fit. Right. But it does sound like a thousand year reign, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. um, Israel no. possess them as an inheritance. Yes. So it's like, you know, Israel, there yes. will be vengeance. Thousand year reign. Yeah. Finally. Yeah. He has avenged their blood. Remember that we put that down there as the blood avenger. Finally, the saints under the altar go, how much longer? More added right. to you. When it's I coming, was, but not yet. When I was reading that in Jeremiah, I was like, oh, oh God. Exactly, <laughs> right? Please, Lord, let it come. Um, <laughs> verse 4, that you will take up this taunt against the king of Babylon and say, how the oppressor has ceased, how fury has ceased. The Lord has spoken the staff, broken the staff of the wicked, the scepter of the rulers, what does this uh, king of Babylon sound like? Well, he thinks God. So who does it sound like in Revelation? The beast. The beast. The beast. Yeah. beast. This is a future Babylon. So this one we can know that they haven't ceased from their turmoil. They don't have full rest and possession. No, that's not happened yet. This must be the future Babylon then. I'm not, again, trying to jam it in to make it history. Yeah. I'm waiting to see it because it hasn't happened. Okay. Um, that was verse 4. The whole earth is at rest and is quiet. They break forth into shouts of joy. Is that when the beast reigns? No, it's after. No, oh, it's after. Right, okay. Uh, the cypress trees rejoice over you and the cedars of Lebanon, saying... Uh, since you were laid low, no tree cutter comes up against us. This is trees talking. <laughs> uh, this is not Lord of the Rings. This is the trees talking. Sheol from beneath is excited over you to meet you when you come. And it arouses for you the spirits of the dead, all the leaders of the earth. What does that sound like? Arouses for you the spirits of the dead. Does that not like sound like Babylon that has all that demonic activity in it? Because it said it's going to be the home, right? Dwelling place of all Dwelling these. Place of demons. Right. And every unclean spirit yeah. and bird. And spirit and unclean bird. Yeah. That sounds like future Babylon to me. Uh, the kings. It raises all the kings of the nations from their thrones. Maybe the ten mm -hmm. kings. Okay. I, don't, I don't know. Yeah. <clears throat> these are just questions I have. I'm like, well, it sounds like the ten kings. Um Right. 11, it says the music is gone. It's the same with uh, right. yes. Revelation. Yes, okay. And no more, um, I think I have that too. Uh, it said the star of the morning was cut down in verse 12. Right. Um, That's true. Where did I have music? I did have music. Uh, verse 13 and 14, right. I will ascend to heaven. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. I will sit on the mount of, doesn't that sound like a combination of desolation? Yeah. It's exactly what he's going to do. It, that hasn't happened yet. Mm -hmm. So now we're, we know we're still future, future, future. Okay. Uh, what's going to happen to them in verse 15? What will be the end? <coughs> Drown to the shell. Right. Yes. To the recesses of the pit. What pit? Bottomless pit. Bottomless pit, which is also the abyss. Okay. Is that a permanent place? 
Nope. See, I know I always keep asking that. Review is good. Just always remember that's not permanent, but he will be permanent. Okay? Um, those who see you will gaze at you, will then ponder over you, saying, Is this the man who made the earth tremble, who shook kingdoms? What does that remind you of in that in Revelation? I'll do this a couple times, I wonder, but they when they see her, they wonder, right? They wonder, yeah. and at Babylon, and they're standing uh, the far off, are. and they're like, What's happening? She's blazing, right? What happened to Babylon? Right, she's she not, they're so not great. coming to her aid. Isn't that interesting? Nobody's running to help her. Everybody's standing back. Why do you think that is? I mean, if my friend, because if someone can take down is in Babylon, trouble, right? They can right. If they can take down Babylon, me, they can just get They are in right. Some fear. Right, because Babylon is nobody can touch Babylon. Yes. They're the economic center of the world. And if she wasn't their friend, they were using her while it was exactly, exactly, exactly. And I think she knew that. But it didn't she could not care. Oh, yeah, she care. Because she's not going to mourn it. She she's don't need to be any friends. Well, she because she figured need. she would always hold the position. See? I spent by Is myself. that not the arrogance of wow. the world we live in? Maybe. Okay. Um, when it said, verse 19, you have been cast out of your tomb. A tomb is where somebody is dead. dead. But what happens to the little horn? Oh, Right, he's as if slain, but now he's he's back on that. Okay, nobody gets cast out of their tomb; they're dead. Mm -hmm. He does, like a rejected branch, clothed with the slain. the slain who are pierced with a sword. Could that be martyrs? These are people that died. Yeah, he has the blood of them. Notice who go down to the stones of the pit like a trampled corpse. corpse you will not be united with them in burial. There is something different about who he's hurt. Okay? Um, complete destruction, verse 22. Cut off from Babylon, name, survivors, offspring, posterity. I don't think there's anything left. If you don't have a name, there's nobody surviving, there's no offspring, there's no posterity. Yeah, there's no future. There's no future. Yeah. Yeah. It's it gone. Has ended. That's pretty complete. Um, again, sh uh, verse 24. Surely, just as I have intended, so it has happened. Mm -hmm. And just as I have planned, so yeah. it will stand. Amen. How do you. That. Yeah. <coughs> it says it has happened. Coming back. How does it has happened? That's like, oh, well, it's already done. How do you know it's still future? How do you rationalize that in your head? This is a he knows the future. He knows the future. Okay. Remember, God is beginning and end. Mm -hmm. It's not, oh, here's my 24 hour period. No. This has happened because this is God's story. We just happen to be in this part yeah. of the story, but it has yeah. happened. Now, we can't get that because we live in time. Everything is time. We have to be here, 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 and here, here. This is what we do. This is what we do. No. The end. Right. Only God. Right. That's crazy to think about because we are so that time, is. time, time. Yeah. It's not time. Yeah. This is. He's eternity. He's eternity. <laughs> right. Okay. And it's. Uh, I sometimes I struggle with the question: Where will you spend eternity? You are in eternity yeah, right now. It's just your location is going to change. <laughs> because we are eternal. Yeah, yeah. Right. We are eternal beings. Wow. We either have an abundant life with Jesus here on earth and in heaven, mm -hmm. or we don't. Mm -hmm. What you see as life is temporary, but that's just because that's what I can see. Mm -hmm. I am an eternal being. I have a soul that never, ever ends. That's the difference. Think about, you know, what's the question? What is this compared to eternity? Okay, I can let that go. Right. Okay, that's uh, true. That's not very big deal. Right. Location. I'm here, but I will be there. And it won't mean anything there, so. It's just a different way to look at your life. Very All right, Jeremiah 50. What do these chapters teach about Babylon? Tell me the setting. Where is Jeremiah? 
in the history of the Israel is what I should say. Because remember, this is a Jewish book. Right. Uh, are they in captivity, before captivity, after captivity? Where are they? Or maybe they're both. Look at Jeremiah's timeline. Well, he starts prophesying before. Yes. Captivity. Does he go into captivity into with that? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So he's shortly before and during Jerusalem's fall to who? Yeah. Babylon. To Babylon, the head. Yeah. The head of the statue. That's where he is. In timeline, think about that. That's where he is. He's not with Isaiah. Isaiah knew the needs of the Persians were coming in. Jeremiah is here, and he's going into captivity because he's been such a bad prophet. No. <laughs> no. He's, he's going there with them. He's going there with them. Do you think that's a comfort to them? No, because they don't like what he's what saying. They don't like what he's saying. However, what was the prophet's job? To tell what God said. So, yeah. will they still hear God's voice in captivity? Yes. yes. They will. That's a comfort. Now, what he says may not be a comfort, but mm -hmm. at least God hasn't stopped talking to them. Okay? And he sent somebody with them. Okay? I can't help but parallel that with World War II and mm -hmm. Corey Ten Boom and Betsy Ten Boom being in those prison camps in Dachau and Auschwitz with Scripture. And thanking God for the fleas and the lice because the guards won't come in because they don't want them. But they have the word of God. So there's a comfort because God's still with them in this horrible place. He hasn't left them alone. His word is still there. This is the same thing with Israel. He hasn't left them alone, but you're being judged. You didn't do what I told you to do, so I'm bringing these nations against you, but I'm sending Jeremiah with you. You're not going to like what he says, but he's speaking for me. Okay? Uh, have you ever had to do that? Have you ever just say, you know, I love you, but scripture says, and you're doing, and you shouldn't be so. I don't think Jeremiah was that kind. I don't think Isaiah was that kind either. Okay? He did what he had to do. Right. And he spoke truth. I hope he spoke it in love, but you know. <clears throat> Jeremiah is telling them about their future where? In Babylon. In Babylon. Mm -hmm. Okay. He began to prophesy about 50 years after Isaiah. Okay. Um, is he in Judah or Israel? He's Judah. He's Judah, okay? Uh, and look at verse 4. In those days and at that time. Why is that important? Why do we need to know that? Because it's predetermined, set, planned by God. Okay, right. Uh, there's no, it might happen. Yeah, no. no. Or if you repent, no. Mm -hmm. It's coming. It's coming. Okay. This is sure and certain. And it says the sons of Israel will come, both they and the sons of Judah as well. Mm -hmm. So you know they've got to be going, well, if Israel gets to be punished, you know, and I'm in Israel, aren't you going to punish Judah too? Because they're part of your people too. So, you know, you know that happened because you know yourself. You would be saying that. I would be saying that. I'd, you know, got to be fair. God's got to be fair. <laughs> well, they both got judged. Yeah. They both got sent into captivity. Mm -hmm. And they should have never been a divided kingdom anyway. Yeah. Right. Okay? Right. That was never his plan. Right. Um, 50 verse 5. What is this everlasting covenant that will not be forgotten? Uh, well, <laughs> God made it with Abraham when he took mm -hmm. the Mount of Syria. Right. Uh, what was the covenant? Well, there will be a remnant. Yeah. And I will be your God and you will be my hand. This land I'm going to give to you. Right. To who? Right. For how long? Jews. Forever. Forever. Right. right. And then he came the in the to Isaac and he said, and to your descendants and descendants. And then he came to Jacob, Jacob and he said, and to your because he's confirming, 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 mm -hmm. and changed Jacob's name to 
Israel. Israel. So now you know how Israel got their name. Right. Okay? And this covenant is conditional. No. No, it's not. Who's it based on? It's based on God. It's just based on God. Uh, because Abraham was such a mighty man, no, like Nimrod. No, no. That's because God's God. faith is God. Just because God picked out Abraham. Why? Yeah. I don't know. Abraham well, doesn't know. know. He had that faith. He picked up the right person. He, he picked God. out the right person, but he knew yeah. that, right? Yeah. But could Abraham go, you? why me? What? Yeah. Of course he did. Of course he did. And he made mistakes. Yeah. Thank God. Thank God he made mistakes. He's not this perfect guy. Okay? Uh, and yet, that covenant was not conditional on Abraham being a perfect guy. So whose land is Israel? God's. It's God's land, and he gave it to Israel. his chosen people. Yeah. Choose. Forever. Forever. For, forever. Okay? Um, God's vengeance. Boy, I had, to, I had to start marking that word. I know. It was yeah. like... Okay, now you didn't tell me to, but it's just like everywhere here. So when it's repeated, you know, being the inductive students that we are, right? We're like, I got to yeah. mark that. Repeat that. Repeat, repeat, repeat. So raise your battle cry against her. Who's the her? Babylon. On every side. She has given herself up. Her pillars have fallen. Her walls have been torn down. For this is the vengeance of the Lord. Take vengeance on her as she has done to others. So do to her. What does that make you think of? Ooh. Do we do others as you have done? Yeah, it does, but well, Revelation. Revelation. What does Revelation say? Uh, Don't you wonder about that little pause? Twice, yeah. 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 What do they say about Balor? What do we want you to do to them? Give him twice what, Give him twice twice what he's done. Give him yes, to he you. deserves it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, well, that right there. As the she has done to others, so do to her. Yeah. Uh, your mother will be greatly, yes, isn't that awful? She who gave you birth will be humiliated. Behold, she will be the least of the nations, a wilderness, a parched land, and a desert. Who is well, the mother of Babylon? I don't know. <laughs> I have a question there. That I, the I, I did too. I'm like, your mother will be greatly ashamed. Wow. Hmm. Yeah. I, we never read who about her. Babylon. Do we? Yeah. Well, who birthed Babylon would have been back in Genesis, right? Jezebel. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. 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 I, you know, it's like I mean, mother, from, I mean, and, and in the end, it comes from the same people. It does. Right? Yeah. Yeah. But the wickedness, yeah. Jezebel is always thinking about us as a wicked, 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 wicked. That's true too. And Babylon is a wickedness. Wicked, so maybe wicked, wicked, wicked. The, yeah. So Jezebel's little baby. Now, <laughs> it's a word picture. It's a word picture. <laughs> I'll take the word picture. <coughs> Uh, verse 17, do you have dates there? Israel is a scattered flock. The lions have driven yes. away. The first one who devoured him was the king of Assyria in what day? 722? Wasn't no, Assyria would have been before 722. Babylon was 722. No, 705. Uh, 605 was defeated. 605 was defeated. 605 BC. There you go. Yeah. And, and Assyria, 722. Ned, which is 586 BC. Because that's when Babylon came in to Jerusalem. Do you see that on your timeline? What do you have in Assyria? I have 605 BC. In Assyria? Uh, for verse 17. Verse 17. The Is first who devoured him was the king of Assyria. Is it that the Bible took the north part of the. 70 year Jewish captivity. 722. Neb. No. Nebuchadnezzar Assyria. is right there. I have five, on, or see, 9 and 10, I have 539 BC. And then. 605. Well, Nebuchadnezzar is 605 BC. Yes. But Assyria, okay. what's that 720 20 when, when Assyria That's from our other one. Uh, Assyria is up here for Isaiah's time. And yes, I would do that. Okay. I would put Assyria there for the 722. Yeah. But then when it says Nebuchadnezzar, I put 605. Yes, yeah. I have two dates. Does that 722 make sense? and yeah. 605. Yes, thank yeah. you. Was I saying no on that? Wait, yes. Wait. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. I forgive you. I was a little bit. You can, but it, but <laughs> again, you look I at that and do you have to go, oh, I'm going to make it fit. It just fits. Well, well, it's 530. Why do I have 539 for verse somewhere in between verse 8 and 10? 8 and 10? Like, I guess it's 9. Zerubbabel is coming. Wait. But he's 
539 is when the meads take over. Thank you. Because yeah. that's here. Is that the five? 539 is when the meads take over okay. from Babylon. Right. So again, you can put that on the statue, but you still have the statue. So I guess if you're looking at verse 18, mm -hmm. behold, I'm going to punish the king of Babylon in his land. That happened in 539 when the ne Medes took over. Just as I punished the king of Assyria. So the punishment of Babylon was 539. There you go. Because that's when the Medes came in. Okay. Right. That's probably why you have 539. See, you knew you were so right. I have a lot of words, and I can't read any of them, but this time it was like <laughs> one thing I could read, and I'm like, eh. <laughs> Been there. Fall yeah. of Babylon 5.30. Okay, verse 20, we have uh, repeated again. In those days, in those days and at that time, in yeah. what days? In those days, days the Lord has determined. Uh, right, okay. Think about what's above it before, right? Uh -huh. Search will be made for the iniquity of Israel, but there won't be any. Is this future or present or history? Future. So it's got to be. It's got to be, right? Because they got sins. I got yeah. sins. Yeah. So they got to have sins. Future. So this is future. It's, it's got to be future. Like For the sins of Judah, they won't be found. I will pardon those whom I leave as a remnant. Mm -hmm. So who do we know is going to be occupying yeah. Israel? Judah. The remnant. Judah. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Judah. Against the land of Marathiam or Thea. Who, what was that? That's a symbolic name given to Babylon. Right. So that you can mark as Babylon again. Right. Uh, and against the inhabitants of Pecod, again, a people in Babylon. So you can mark that as Babylon. It, it's also with the, um, if you look at the map, you will see that Peacock and Merrill River right. point to the country of Kuwait today. Kuwait. Modern day Chaldea. Do you know Kuwait has the highest living standard in the world? Their people are incredibly rich. Mm -hmm. Every one of them. Oh, wow. Um, oil. That's Kuwait. interesting. Because of their oil. That's very oil, interesting oil. that it's yeah. Kuwait. I got that from gospeltoiraq.com. That is very interesting. <laughs> and also, hmm. it says that um, this. Um, Meredith, where right. Meredith is, is a piece of land north of Saudi Arabia to the far east. North of Saudi Arabia to yeah. the far east. Which is Iraq. This is Iraq yeah. in Prophecy. Yeah, right. So it seems to me <laughs> Babylon is where. <laughs> what can you say? I know, what can you say? <laughs> right? What can, what this, this That's is where we live. Iraq today. Um, I said a stair up here, I'm not aware. And let go on down to mm -hmm. verse. Um, 28. Here's the vengeance again. What's the vengeance for in verse 28? Oh, all those who hate him. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> the sound of fugitives and refugees from the land of Babylon to declare in Zion, so Israel, mm -hmm. the vengeance of the Lord our God. Vengeance for his temple. Why does he need vengeance for his temple? What? Because it's been desecrated. Desecrated. Right. Future or already happened? Well, it's both, but in the future is when it's really right. desecrated. Right. right. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then verse 46. Again, we're going to try and get similarities in Revelation, because that was our homework. Um, anybody have anything from that before? Does that remind you of your Revelation before verse 46? Yeah. He planned against Babylon. Okay. That's <clears throat> 1718. He's planned against Babylon. We know that's going to yeah. happen. The earth is shaken when Babylon is seized. Well, what does that make you think of? Okay. There you go. Uh, what is Revelation 1618? Uh, if it's Chapter 16, what's listed in 16? 16 is the bulls. Because in 17 and 18, then we get Babylon, right? So 16 is the bulls. Verse 18 is which bull? It's bull. Seven bulls. Seven. Just the end. Yeah. Yeah. 
right? The wrath of God is finished. Okay? Earth is shaken. I hope that's the end. Yeah. Okay? A bad, bad, and bad. It's going to happen rapidly. Okay? I had to look up vengeance, but it's also translated revenge. Who is he, you know, uh, giving revenge to? Who needs revenge? The saints. The saints. Right, right. And he's just dripping with their blood because he has so many. She's drunk with their blood. Right. They need vengeance. We know that all the way back to the fifth seal. They're under the altar crying. How long? How long will you wait to avenge our blood? Jeremiah 51. Behold, I am going to arouse against Babylon and against the inhabitants of Leb Kamai. That is the heart of those who are rising up against me. It's a cryptic name for Babylon. So you can mark it the same. This, okay, why was the spirit of a destroyer? What is who does that make you think of? Hmm? White, the first. Ooh, right? Spirit of a destroyer is going to conquer and to conquer. Mm-hmm. Which beast. we're now thinking is the first mention of the beast. The beast. Mm-hmm. Okay. <clears throat> so every time I read Spirit of Destroyer, I just kind of put beast. Mm-hmm. It describes describes him perfectly. Um Okay, in the day of her calamity, another time phrase. Is this uh, future or is this already happened? It's future. It's future. It's future. future. Jeremiah is where? Remember your setting. He's southern kingdom, but he's in captivity. He's in captivity. And he's talking about his captors. He doesn't want this to be future. He wants it to be now. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we just, right? it now. just come and avenge our blood now yeah. and rescue us and do this. But it's not. It's still future. Though he is in captivity with these people. So who do we know comes after the Babylonians? In his time setting. The needs of the Persians. Yeah. Okay? He knows this is future. Yeah. Not going to happen right now. Um... What did you do with verse 7? Babylon has been a golden cup in the hand of the Lord, <laughs> intoxicating all the earth. The nations have drunk of her wine, therefore the nations are going mad. He's in control. He's in control. That's, that's right? Oh. Verse, verse, verse 7. Good. Good, like come out from them, like that's what you're thinking of. And then, right? And in verse um, in verse 2, when it's talking about winnow, and yeah. we do, uh, well, I was like, winnow, that sounds like, at first I thought widow, and yeah. I was like, no, that's not right, so, but winnow, and then, but there's a word in agriculture, it's winrow, and we, winrow. right, which you do for hay, but winnow, it's the same thing, though, it but is. it's, it's when you, like, harvest, we, well, it's after you <laughs> cut it, and then when we, it's to dry out hay, we put them in winrow. But it takes out the uh, it takes out the yeah. impurities, right? Yeah. You shake yeah. it out, and all the chaff yeah. falls out, and the you good is left. left. Right, and you're left with the wheat. Yeah, the yeah. wheat seed. But that would be the same if they're fleeing either way. Yes, right. yes. But they may win over. Who's going to win over? The foreigners. The foreigners. The foreigners. The foreigners. Right. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Uh, God uses the spirit of a destroyer. Okay. Who is Babylon riding on? In Revelation, the beast, yeah. right? Not a surprise that he turns against her because right. he's the spirit of the destroyer and God said already back in Jeremiah, he's going to do that. <clears throat> this is what I looked up for spirit of destroyer. Oh, uh, imparting warlike energy. Oh, that's totally appropriate. Okay? Because what can he destroy that nobody else can destroy? In Revelation, the two witnesses. How come he can do that? Because God allowed it. That's right. An executive and administrative power go to ruin. I still think this could be the beast. He's still prophesied way back there in Jeremiah. That's amazing to me. Uh, 
What else? What else? What else stood out to you in Jeremiah? I know stood out to me. I had to start marking that because that was crazy. Um, no breath in them. Deceitful, worthless, a mockery, and will perish. Okay, that's a pretty good example of idol. What do you think of when you think of an idol in Revelation? When you think of the idol that the false prophet sets up. Right, mm -hmm. and then who gives it breath? The beast. The beast. So it comes alive, mm -hmm. right? And it says, no breath in them. Because the idols don't have breath. Right. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Exactly. Okay? Just some things you're going to just going to. Well, what about 21? With you, I shatter the horse and his rider. Did that stand out to you? Because here we have, right? The fifth seal. Is that what I said? Fifth seal, and he comes riding to conquer, conquering and to conquer. No, the seal fifth seal one. is the souls. Uh, the right, right. It's the, the first, first seal, seal is, is the, the destroyer. That, thank you. The destroyer thank you. Mike. Where does that come? First. Isn't yeah. that interesting? Yeah. Those four horses. Yes. <clears throat> Some things just go, hmm, that kind of sounds like. Now, can I absolutely say plug it in? I don't know. It, it just sounds familiar. Uh, behold, verse 25, I am against you, O destroying mountain, who destroys the whole earth. Uh, verse 25, and, and, then, and, and I will make you a burnt out mountain. Does that remind you of Babylon in Revelation? Yes, it sits on yes. seven mountains. Right. Good. Right. And what happens? She's burned. She's burned. So we know how she gets destroyed by fire. Um, come forth from her, flee from her midst. Okay. Does that give you a little <laughs> bit of information on Revelation? I'm like, hey, I think they said that in Revelation, right? Um, why would she be there? And who's the she? Israel. Israel, or believers, or saints, right. or whatever, those that are his, are within Babylon. Why would she be there? Why would believers, saints, Israel be in Babylon? Because they were scattered. They were scattered. Okay. I think believers are going to be in Babylon. Yeah. Because in scriptures it says, I will get you out before I destroy you. Right, mm -hmm. right. Okay. Do you not feel like you're in Babylon now sometimes? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, if I'm supposed to get out, where am I supposed to go? There's no place I can go that Babylon isn't. But that's not the case in Revelation. There will be a place yeah. for them to get out and go. It's almost like Sodom and Gomorrah, isn't it? Like Lot going in and going, get out, get out. Yeah. And then they finally get out, fire, right? And it is burned to this day. There is no inhabitant in Sodom and Gomorrah. It's a very interesting history to look at that. And anybody that's tried to build there has been thwarted by something. <laughs> it just hasn't worked out. It's very interesting to watch. When God said nothing is going to be there anymore, he meant it. And he makes it happen. Okay? Um, Babylon's fall is for the slain of Israel and all the earth. Again, that sounds like the martyrs, the right. drunk with the blood of the saints. That's what it sounds like. <laughs> so now Revelation is helping you understand Isaiah and Jeremiah. I never expected that. Uh, what, is, what does Revelation have to do with those two Old Testament prophets? Well, now I know. <laughs> but I didn't. Okay, uh, can you add anything else? What else did you get that, that I haven't brought up? Because I know, you know, you guys are very good students. And I won't see everything that you see, and you won't see everything I see. Anything repeated that you went, why Well, that? I think what kept standing out for me, um, <clears throat> the only verse I specifically wrote down was Jeremiah 51, 11, but it just kept saying repeatedly, the Lord's purpose is against Babylon. Yes. 
And then if you look like in Revelation 17, 7, where God has put it in their hearts mm -hmm. to execute his purpose. Yeah. Isn't that something? And it just struck me. It's like, and I actually finally wrote on in my margin somewhere, so in case you missed it. Right. God is going to destroy Babylon. God is going to destroy Babylon. It's a given. It's going to happen. I wrote that, and then about two verses down, it, oh, and then it says in 55, for the Lord is going to destroy Babylon. <laughs> there and I had written that up on about 50 before I got See? there. See, but, it's, it's, <laughs> but it's, that's such a great confirmation sometimes, though. Yeah. Um, did you not see uh, uh, also the He's bows and the arrows? And, uh, I kept seeing uh, drawing back or bows or arrows, and they're going to cut them down with their arrows. We don't fight with bows and arrows. Yeah. Of course, we never had beheadings before either. Mm. Uh, but now we do, but I don't know why, but that's come back. Why, why bows and arrows? I mean, it's all like, I forget the word, I'm trying to think of it. But it's quiet. Yeah. It's very skilled. Yeah. If you're a hunter and you hunt with bows and arrows, it's very quiet. Deadly. And if you've ever seen those um, medieval movies, and you see him let go of the arrows, it's like raining mm -hmm. arrows. You're like, huh, who, could, who could even fight like that? They kind of hide under their shields, and that only lasts for a little while, and then they're going to get you. It's just a question I had. I was like, why so many bows and arrows? Why? I always just no. they can't. That was like their only way for fighting that was like an assault. You know what I mean? From a distance. Yes. So it and just still stay safe sport. from a distance. Well, well yeah. I mean, it's, the fighting with the bows and arrows Placed with firearms, but right. it's the same same concept. Concept, of true, true. Uh, maybe not. It stops the pipe, or you know what I mean. Like, I do. I, I do. I get it. <clears throat> uh, consuming fire. Uh, again, we saw fire, 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 fire. <laughs> but see, arrows can send fire. That is true. Yeah, because they can shoot fire with arrows, not with bullets. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, they had the fire things, but you have to be pretty close for that. Right. Not far off. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's just a question. And you know, those writers, they were going <coughs> destructive things. The that scales, maybe not so, but that shows fraud. But I don't know. It's just something that kept standing out. Standing out, like, we don't fight like that now. But I guess we're going to. I kept looking at the geography. Mm -hmm. I really kept looking at the geography. East. Because yeah. we kept hearing in the East, from the east and also north. Mm -hmm. And so I was yes. really looking at the geography of it. Um, as we're talking about, is this the same Babylon? Right. And remembering... Location-wise, is this the same? Yeah. Uh -huh. Remembering in Revelation, a lot of times when it's saying from the east, mm -hmm. our location is actually in Jerusalem. Well, Babylon's to the east. Right. So they're coming from the east. When it talks mm -hmm. about in Revelation, um, the beast turning and looking towards the north or from the east because people are coming That's where they're coming from um, to fight it. He's hearing rumors that he's hearing yeah. rumors from north and east. And right. if you consider that Babylon's first conquerors came from the north. That's right. Uh-huh. Being the Medes and the Persians. Uh-huh. And then right. if you look to see what's once again. So I'm looking I'm like, okay, the beast but the beast isn't actually in Babylon. The beast is in Jerusalem. So once again, it's Babylon. Once again. You're afraid he's dried up. Yes, to make a way for those kings to come through. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, okay, <clears throat> speaking of the Euphrates, I had a, at the end down there that it's thrown into the river. Yes. So mm -hmm. what does the angel do? The the angel it's like a burning mountain going and into throws it. into, yeah. That was another kind of, yeah. hmm, destruction is kind of the same. And, uh, you know, again, is it? I don't know. Is that Jeremiah prophesying? I don't know, but it's pretty similar to me. But you know what? This is also one of the things that gives proof to the authenticity of the Bible. It does. In that, considering the number it? of writers, they could not have come yeah. up with could these not. same... True. And the number of years. Examples of some, over this time span, if it was not from God. That's right. That's right. Which is... Uh, which is another, uh, you know, I, I listened to Robbie, I've told you guys that before, and he says that uh, one of the major things that we have dropped the ball on, as far as Christianity is concerned, is apologetics, giving an answer for your faith. Why do you believe in Scripture? Why do you think it's the truth? How can that be the truth and the Quran is not? I'm like, so, so true. But the validity of Scripture, 
it's proved and proved and proved. The lack of mistakes. It never contradicts itself. It's never added to, it's never taken away. We have the oldest manuscripts. F. Why? Why do you think that little shepherd boy just happened mm -hmm. to hit the little, if you've ever seen it, you're like, you would never find it in that because it's just massive. There's a, there's a scroll in there, you got me. It's massive. He happened to throw a little rock and hit the little jar that the Dead Sea Scrolls were in, happened to. <laughs> How do you find that? It's just this massive wall of because that's when God wanted him to find that to prove what we believe because that's what we needed at that certain time in his story. I don't know. It's just fascinating to look back. This is why we believe what we believe because it's true and it's proven true. Every time you try to go and prove it wrong, you end up, whether you want to or not, proving it correct. That is not what you set out to do. However, facts can't be argued with. So, I'm thinking that's this is why we study. This is why we study so that we know this is our this is truth because it is truth. Okay, quickly Zechariah five, and it was short, right? Right. I thank you. I know you were glad for that. Um, and it also says uh, in lesson seven you're slowing down. So be grateful. This coming week you're gonna slow down. Okay, then I lifted my eyes again and looked, and behold, there was a flying scroll. Oh, that was interesting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm like, really? And he said to me, what do you see? He said, I see a flying scroll. flying scroll. Its length is 20 cubits, and its width 10 cubits. And he said to me, this is the curse. That's uh -huh. going over the face of the whole land. Surely everyone who steals, purged away. Everyone who swears, purged away. Right? Yeah. Who is making it go forth? Well, God, is. God is making oh, God. it go yes. forth. Okay? I will make it go forth. Exactly. Um, mm -hmm. Anyone who swears falsely by my name, isn't that off? It will spend the night within that house and consume it with its timber and stones. Wow, that's destruction. That's destruction. Okay, so he has two things that he's talking about. First, we have a flying scroll, and then what do we have? Okay, we have a woman. You have a woman. The wickedness. Okay, sitting inside an ephah, which is just like a bushel basket. I'm thinking. It's kind of what I took it as. Measuring basket. A measuring basket. I was going that. Yeah. 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 Now, <clears throat> keep setting. People of Judah were in Babylon for 70 years. Okay? Uh, the Medo Persian kingdom overthrew the Babylonian kingdom. This is your time frame for Zechariah. Okay? Um, many from Judah left to return to their own land and rebuild. That's a good thing. And they're happy about that. Uh, Israel began working, rebuilding the temple under Zerubbabel. Okay? Now he gets this. So he says, what do you see? And, and he says, I see an ephah, right? Uh, and this is a woman sitting inside the ephah. What is that woman? Wickedness. Wickedness. Yeah. This is wickedness. <laughs> and it's a woman. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> okay, well, okay, I don't have to push too hard to go, this is Babylon, because she's a woman and she's wicked. Okay? And he threw her down into the middle of the ephah and cast the lead weight on its opening. She can't get out. Then I lifted up my eyes and looked, and there were two women. <laughs> were coming out with the wind in their wings, and they had wings like the wings of a stork, and they lifted up that ephah that the woman is in, all sealed up, between the earth and the heavens. I said to the angel who was speaking with me, where are they taking the ephah? He said to me, to build a temple for her in the land of Shinar. And when it's prepared, she will be set there on her own pedestal. Mm. Future or already happened in Genesis 10? It's got to be future. Now we, it wasn't really a temple, it was a tower. Right. And is it there? No, God destroyed it. It was in the land of Shinar, but it's gone. So this is, again, future. Okay? This is 
wickedness. So wickedness personified is Babylon. Mm -hmm. All right? Two visions. Uh, scroll was the curse, and wickedness is her name. So that was just kind of thrown in, I felt like, at the end of your homework going, okay? <laughs> but now I have also another name for her. Wickedness. Yeah. Wow. Now, um, your application. Because that was your application, you know, that was your last question in your homework. The word wickedness also gives you the idea that it's more than just a location, more than just that's a true. spirit. It's, yes. The, that is very yeah. true. It is a, wickedness is everywhere. Right. It can get in anything. In anything. Spends mm -hmm. the night. Yeah. Within the uh, and it destroys the house that it's in. Mm -hmm. well, that's true. Um, why do you think you're studying Babylon? You know your enemy. <laughs> you know your enemy. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yes. If you don't know what to look for, mm -hmm. you get kind of deceived, don't you? Mm -hmm. You're like, oh. Because even Christians know. will be in, will be caught up we'll in We'll be her. in it because yeah. before you ask, before I destroy Babylon. I don't Babylon. want him to get confused. Yes. <laughs> ah, yeah. I'm still here. You're really clearly Wait, I'm coming out, right? Yeah. 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 Wait. Okay. Um, I don't want to be associated with her. Exactly. Okay? Yeah. Uh, I don't want to be anything like her. So if this is what God hates, then I want to be that. Yeah. Yeah. Totally the opposite. That's why I study Babylon. Um, I also want to know so that false prophets can't confuse me and can't tell me, you know, mm -hmm. Ron take this thing called the sign. So I was, we were watching it, and they're trying to figure out uh, the end of the world. Mm -hmm. Then there's this guy that's saying, everybody says Jesus can come at any time. He goes, no, he can't. <laughs> and I'm like, well, rapture could happen at any time, but you're right. There are things that still have to happen, which is what he's saying. Right. Um, then they're talking about Planet X. And we're waiting for Planet X to come in. I'm like, Planet what? Uh -huh. Where's that at? But again, if you hadn't studied, you could be going, yeah, that's what it is. That sounds cool. Yep. Maybe that's, I know that's not it. Yeah. And science proves that if a Planet X comes in, what's it going to do to the Earth's axis? Yeah. Okay, well, I know Earth isn't destroyed like that. Earth is destroyed by fire. So, no, that can't be it. But how do you know that? Because you study. Because you know what Babylon's going to be. That's why you study. So you can't be turned from here and there because, you know, oh, that, that's not true. That, that can't be right. So when you read things in a museum, when you hear things on TV, and you're like, oh, that's really, really good, until they say something, mm -hmm. oh, that's right. Or maybe they are right and you're wrong. And you go look it up and you're like, oh, my gosh, it does say that. That happens too. That's why you study. That's why you're looking at these things. And remember, it always said, be learned. Be on your guard. Don't be afraid. Boy, do we do that. Especially with Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. I can't even go to a country music concert anymore. I could be gunned down. You could die in a car wreck, too. Yeah. But you know what? It's. I don't know how to say this and not be really mean. It's not believers that you hear make that statement quite so much as unbelievers who think of themselves as, as being uh, good or believing, but they live with all the fear because they don't truly know God. Right. Because right. you know, I, I thought I thought that same thing and then I thought, really I can go do anything I want because when God wants me to die, I die. Right. <laughs> That's, that <laughs> takes the fear of death, the sting of death yeah, away. Whatever. Nothing decides that I'm going to die and nothing has control of me except God. And when God decides that for me, then that's going to happen. I'm telling you right now, it's going to happen. Nothing you can do to stop it. You can't change future. You can't go be a little time traveler and change all the... Yeah, no, that's not going to happen. Um, because that's what it is. That's, that's how you're going to die. That's how you're going to die. That's not how you're going to die. I say that all to right. my kids all the time. <laughs> I'm going to let you guys go. I'm going to start the video here in just a second. <laughs> no, it just means if you're made to die in this hurricane, then you're going to die.